What's up, everybody? Welcome to the KCSN Defensive Film Breakdown. My name is Craig Stout. I am just ecstatic to be joined by Mike DeVito and Derek Johnson to break down some of the tape from Monday Night Football against the Giants, the Kansas City Chiefs. Mike, DJ, thanks so much for jumping on here to talk about the tape. I'm sure people are going to love this. DJ, really appreciate you coming on here, man. I love watching you play ball. It's it's been kind of a big deal to me that I'm getting to talk to you right now. So really appreciate you jumping on with me and Mike right now. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the tape here. We're going to go through some of this, talk about this some highlight plays, maybe some plays that you missed a little bit between the trenches, but we're going to start with a play here that was one of the biggest plays of the game. Come from Willie Gay. After a Chiefs offensive turnover, jumping a route, picking the ball off, setting the Chiefs offense up with a good play here. DJ, throughout your time, you got your hands on a lot of passes from the second level, and you can kind of see here Willie's got good doing a good job of reading the quarterback's eyes, getting good depth, and you know, the kind of zone awareness to be able to undercut this route. When you're kind of backpedaling as a linebacker, reading the reading the quarterback's eyes, you see the the quarterback load up like that. Do your eyes just get real wide? Like you you see it coming, <laughs> you're ready for it. Absolutely. This this play <laughs> makes you smile, man. I, I love when linebackers uh uh, make plays like this. I always, I, I'm a big believer of uh, the really good linebacker backers have great eyes. And right here, this is a great example, having great eyes, trusting his instincts, not not taking off running already because uh, mm-hmm. uh, the quarterback's already looking there, but he he, he trusts his feet, trusts his eyes. He, he, he shuffled a little bit, flat foot read. And then as soon as that other arm comes off the ball, take off and um, go get the ball at 90 degree angle angle. It was perfect. I love this. Yeah. Man. Great. It was a great play. Great play by Willie Gay Jr. You know, you're seeing the second year linebacker really making an impact there. So that's, it's awesome to see. Awesome to see it in the past game, especially there. What does that feel Ooh. like DJ? What does that feel oh, yeah. like when you get that man? That, oh my just, goodness. That's as it's coming in. You just see it. Coming this in. is, this is ideal for a linebacker, inside backer. Yeah. When you see the quarterback when they snap it, and you see them looking somewhere because a lot of times they want to look us off, so mm-hmm. so that so we can move and they can go somewhere else. But right here, he stared him down a little bit longer, and he knew, okay, it's time is timing is ticking. Everybody right. has a timing in in their clock, uh, in their head. And I tell you what, once that other hand came off the ball, that's when you know, okay, the ball is coming out. And he he did. I mean, that, was, that this was like, man, this was this was textbook. Yeah. 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 All right. This is another play here. Maybe a play that went a little bit under under the radar, but was a really good run stuff and a really good job by Chris Jones coming off the edge, the two tight end side here. But both linebackers you're going to see attack blocks well, are able to get off blocks well. This is just a really good job by these three players and Jaron Reed coming up big here. So we'll we'll give it a play here and you can kind of see it coming downhill. Just building the wall up front <laughs> and getting free. You can actually see Chris Jones it, it kind of swats this tight end out of the play, and the tight end is a little bit lost trying to come back and find Chris Jones. But Willie Gay Jr. and Nick Bolton are able to, you know, stack blocks, shed blocks, get upfield into the gap. I mean, DJ, what, what are you seeing here, man? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Chris Jones is, is, is a pro at slipping blocks. This is what he does. This is, this is, you know, you have certain players where you say, all right, man, just, just, just textbook, you know, get your arm upfield, you know, take this guy back. He's the type of player, uh, uh, um, that at times when he, when he slips back blockers and he does his, his deal, this is not coached a lot. This is, this is his instincts coming out. He knows his gap, what he's supposed to be in, but he just whips that tight end, man. That's why, that's why he's really good. Uh, uh, of course he's a defensive tackle, but he's, when you put him at defensive end, he really treats them, <laughs> those, those outside guys. <laughs> I mean, uh, he treats Ooh. them bad. So th- this is, this is perfect. This is, this is what I want to play behind. You know, I, I, I love, <laughs> <laughs> right here because because uh, you know the office alignment are worrying about these guys you got chris jones slipping blocks taking up two you got the other guys reading those guys 
uh, uh, um, making sure they're building a wall up front. I mean, the inside backers, I mean, it, it's free for all. You just come down here and hit somebody. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Mike, on this play, you can actually see Chris Jones actually throws the guy a little bit in front of Jaron Reed, and Jaron Reed's able to anchor against that that tight end before the tight end turns around to Chris Jones there, throws him right in front of him, but he still keeps the guy clean behind him. Yeah, you know what I love about this play is right from the right from the bat, if you go back to the beginning, yeah. where you got 12 personnel, you have far gun, both tight ends on the line, right? So those tight ends are tight, back is away. You have nothing that's coming to the defense's right. Everything's going to the offense's right, the defense's left. And so what I like is you can tell the guys are aware. Nobody steps down. You know, right away, they're playing into the center as the nose, playing into that tackle as a three technique. Mm-hmm. And then Chris is doing what Chris does. I mean, it, he could do whatever he wants out there with those two guys. <laughs> but you can tell right away from this, not only are their techniques great, but they're aware of the formation. And that's when you know you have a defensive line that's thinking at the next level, is they paid attention to how things were set up. They didn't just line up like a number of guys that I played with but they knew what was going on from the jump, reading the back sets, reading the formation, and they played those blocks perfectly. Yeah, and good on Nick Bolton, Willie Gay, getting off those blocks, getting upfield, filling those gaps on that play there. All right, this next play here is one that you probably remember. This is a third down stop, third and one. You've actually got a quarterback, a kind of a read option. He comes out to the outside, and Willie Gay is the one that loops over all of these guys to the outside. Willie Gay, as you may or may not know, is right there in the B gap. He's actually big going to take play. big time play, going to mm-hmm. take on the left go- or, or here, go over the top and be able to still make this play on <laughs> Daniel Jones. The thing that I love about this here, he's got his eyes in the backfield there, right there. He sees it. He sees where the ball is and he's able to shed that blocker loop over the top. Frank Clark does a good job of contain there. But once again, just a good job up front by the defensive lineman and a good job by Willie Gay using that athleticism to get over the top. Yeah, you you, right here. This is this is applause right here. This is big time. This is what you show in front of the team. You say, hey, guys, look at this guy at the three technique taking on this lineman like he is. Uh, But I tell you what, uh, um, this is about making a play. You don't draw this up. You don't draw this up. He doesn't you you don't say, hey, Willie Gay, if you do this, you know, you know, come over the top. No, 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 no. That his gap is that B gap. And he and he he um I like when he 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 made sure his job was secure and then he then he went to go help. So I mean that's this is perfect. Yeah. That's Do your job plus by Steve Spagnola right there. Great job. Great and by job. the way, I gotta I gotta say I I love when uh, DeVito talks about formations and stuff because you know <laughs> you know for me you know I, I'm the guy that that always says all right um it's it's two tight ends they're tight they're coming this way you know double yeah. double play coming or or whatever and I'm telling them what to do and I you know De- DeVito's the, he's he's one of the guys he's like hey I already got it I already yeah. know what's going yeah. <laughs> listen when you are fat and unathletic you need to figure it out quick and so that's that's what I do man. That's what. That's the only way I stayed in the league, and I, I was lucky to have linebackers, you know, Hall of Fame linebackers like you behind me that could just run in there and make a play. I didn't have to work too much. <laughs> yeah, <you're> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking speaking of a play by a defensive tackle here, we got Derek Naughty in in the middle here as as one technique here, and you're going to see him walk this offensive lineman back and absolutely ruin this play. And Frank Clark slip a split zone look here the the blocker coming along the backside really blows this up just these two guys blowing this up on a play that's meant to go away from both of them a really good job here play watch Derek Naughty in the middle here just reset the line of scrimmage blows him well into the backfield just just a good job by those guys Nick Bolton actually gets or not Nick Bolton I believe uh it might be Willie Gay Jr. gets a tackle for loss on this play, but this is all made because Derek Naughty resets that line of scrimmage into the backfield. You want to see it one more time? Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. You, you see 91 right there playing with good leverage. Uh, that That's what you know, having that six-inch step, you know, starting off early on as a defensive tackle is big, not taking a big, big step, getting their feet in the ground, yeah. and actually having that, being able to leverage 
that guide. It's all about, I mean, football is not perfect, but it, man, it's, it's, it's about dominating, dominating up front. And, uh, Naughty, <laughs> Naughty did that. That's, that's right there, man. I don't even have to play ball. I can just sit behind him and just look yeah. at that. That's just, that's <laughs> art. That's yeah. art right there. You know what you you got to you really got to give him credit for and this is something that I certainly I, I almost certainly wouldn't have done on this play has been as patient as he is. I mean yes. watch him when he gets off the football he knocks his guys back he's in perfect position and then you see this back almost looks like he's going to cut downhill into that B gap if you go a little bit further. Yep. Right well, there. Yep. Right there. Wow. I would DJ knows he yelled at me a million times. I would have <laughs> armed over right into that gap. Uh, you see, Naughty stays really patient and has his guy extended. Knows he's not in any rush and waits for the ball to commit before he before he you know works his release move. That's that's you know that's hard to teach. That's that's that is true, uh, uh, Mike. That's hard to do as a defensive lineman because you know y'all don't get many tackles. So whenever you get a chance, you're trying to come off. Oh, you know, man. but he just stayed patient. Trust trust his eyes. Trust his strength. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, he just put that guy right in the backfield. Oh, yeah, DJ, yeah. you just saying that, stay patient, it, re- it reminded me of when we were playing because I remember you telling me real time, stay patient, I yep. got you front side, you don't need to rush. Uh, <laughs> you know, because you, you, it's, so, it's so hard to stay disciplined in those situations. I can tell you right now from looking at that, I would have – Armed over into that, yeah, I would have done it. it hey, no hey, that's all, that's, that's all right, Mike. I would have had to tackle. So it's, yeah, that's, it's, that's, that's true. That's true. I wouldn't have been out of my stance, and you would have had the tackle. So that's true. <laughs> yeah, I figured you might like that one, Mike. A little bit of nose tackle play in there. Yeah, yeah that's real good. It. All right, this one is one of the biggest plays of the game. This is right at the very, very end of the game, and you got to see. Uh, uh, this is a Chris Jones sack on second down, but I really want to highlight what Frank Clark does here. Now, right before this clip starts, he's actually communicating with Daniel Sorensen, Ben Neiman, right behind him, you know, at the second level here, communicating to those guys, you know, to keep an eye on it, that he's going to drop into coverage and pick up this running back that gets out in the flat. And so this ends up being a three-man rush, but because Clark does this, He's able to take away the dump off, and now all of a sudden, you've got Chris Jones making sack on an excellent move by Jones. But I really want to highlight here, Frank Clark selling the rush. Like, he's got this tackle in a bind. That tackle is dropping deep into his step. He senses the running back comes out, comes out, takes that away, and at this point... You got Daniel Jones wanting to go to the middle of the field. Ben Neiman's undercutting it. Daniel Sorensen's on top of it in the backside. And you got the running back taken away. Daniel Jones has nowhere to go. He has to eat this sack. Chris Jones has already beaten his man on an awesome move. Just the symbiotic nature of the defense here. You get to see all of those pieces coming together on this play. Really good job on a three-man rush. Gets yeah. a sack here. Yeah. Yeah, you you, you have to uh, you have to manipulate the rush like that when you when you have a three man rush so mm-hmm. you, so so the office alignment can count uh Clark in in the rush so yeah. he's like they're like okay Eric, we ha- we have these four right here and then he comes up the tackle has him but really the tackle has nobody so we eliminated one of those guys mm-hmm. out of the office alignment uh from blocking one of our three rushers and uh Chris Jones this this is what he does you want to put him in a wide a wide three and let him get it because he can, he can he can run for a big guy. I mean he he has other moves, but I tell you what, him at a wide three is is a big man that can turn the corner. That's that's what's so incredible about him. Like I watched this and I wish I could see it from the the end zone, but mm-hmm. just his ability to flip his hip <laughs> yeah. and get on the edge for being you know that's seven hard. Feet tall, four hundred pounds. I just don't understand. This man is a he's an absolute monster. I mean. He just look at how explosive! Boom! He does that little hip. He hops out. He he gets great handwork up front. I mean, he's Turned just a technician. And that's, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's all. That's all speed. That the, he he has no power on that. And no. For a defensive tackle, you use power at some point in the rush. He didn't use no power in that. That was all speed and just athletically, just a lot better than that guard. Yeah. 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 yeah, and when you got a gifted guy like that that you can line up in that position, and like you were saying, DJ, you know, you have that tackle occupied. He's got to come out here. 
because Chris Jones is so wide, that center can't slide and come over and help on him either. So now yep. you really <laughs> do truly have that one-on-one matchup. You really do because that tackle is occupied by Clark. So it's just – it's a well-designed three-man rush here on one of the biggest plays of the game, you know, set the set the Giants back, and then obviously they were able to close it out with a Frank Clark, Frank Clark pressure, Frank Clark sack. But, yeah, that's – that's all I had for this week. Um, really appreciate DJ, you coming on, joining Mike and I to talk about some New York Giants football, Kansas City Chiefs football, the defense. It was a pleasure. Mike, thank you so much, man, for also being on here with oh, it. It was, it was awesome to get to talk football with you guys both. Yeah, this this is this is when you're talking football, we can talk all night. Oh, this is hey, easy. Man, Call man, me whenever you need. Great. You I'll tell you what. About something, man. I, I, I love this. This is Let's like, do this it reminds again. me of 2015 with you, DJ. Watch. I didn't know we even had access to this kind of tape. I hate <laughs> watching the regular production, like the Sunday games, because I'm like, I don't know what the hell is going on. I can't see it. Like, I need the end zone view and. I didn't even know we had this. Like this, yep. I'm like fired up right now. This is great. <laughs> doing this with you, DJ. Like, Craig, thank oh, you for man. getting this together. This is really cool. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you. All right, that'll do it for this week. We really appreciate you joining us for this special episode, this defensive breakdown. We'll catch you later. <laughs> <laughs>